Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new wine video. I'm your host, Julien Michel, and today I'm going to take you on a quick tour of the five simple but really key facts about how wine is made. So we're talking about wine making today. And that's so you understand your wine a little bit better and hopefully you'll see your glass of wine slightly differently after watching this video. Let's go. My fellow wine loving friends, Julian here. Before we get started with the video, there is something that you have to know about. This video was made possible by the Bonner Private Wine Partnership and the reason I work with them is not just because it's been called the most unique wine club in America, but because they truly love the wines that they choose for you. Founded by Will Bonner, the partnership is a small group of wine lovers who have come together to import excellent small batch wines that might otherwise get completely overlooked by large importers. They get them. Right now you can get your hands on three rare extreme altitude red wines from Argentina from some of the purest, highest vineyards in the entire world, way up in the Andes mountains. No middlemen, no additive packed supermarket wines here, no inflated cost. Plus you'll get exclusive access to more wine education videos from me, just like the one you're about to watch, to make sure you become an educated wine connoisseur. So make sure to check out the link in the video description to see if you want to become partner in something truly special in the world of wine. But for now, back to your video. Sure, you already knew that, of course, but did you know that it takes about one bunch of grapes to produce roughly one glass of wine? Also, it's nice to think that one vine in a vineyard makes anything between one bottle of wine, so one vine, one bottle of wine, and ten different bottles of wine. Whether it makes only one bottle of wine or ten, then it's going to depend on how many vines are planted in an acre of vineyard or put differently how densely the vineyard is planted. And it's also going to depend on how much the grower pushes the vines to produce more grapes. This obviously in turn obviously impacts on the concentration of the wine and how much flavor is packed into your wine and of course it's going to impact on the price. But that's a subject for another day. Looking at a glass of wine, when I look at a glass of wine and thinking it was once a bunch of grape in a vineyard somewhere in a faraway country or in a wine country that we love, makes you see it differently, doesn't it? Well, at least it does to me, especially when it's a very old wine. I like to think that, you know, the essence of a terroir preserved sometimes for decades in a bottle of wine and in a liquid, especially in a liquid that you can actually taste. So maybe it's just me, but I think it's just a really wonderful thought. Anyways, back to while making well, those grapes are then obviously harvested and that's achieved either by hand using secateurs or with a machine harvester. So it's not very well known outside of, you know, specialists, but the juice inside a grape berry is almost invariably transparent. And I'll try to show you some footage that I made in Provence on a video that I made about rosé highlighting exactly this. In fact, grapes have one of the clearest and cleanest juice of all fruits. It's not only by chance that grapes are the best fruit to make a fine alcoholic beverage. But anyways, the color of wines come from the grape's skin and that's my point for today. Therefore, the intensity of color you notice in different wines come and depends on how long they've been soaked into the juice before pressing. So, for a lightly colored rosé, just like this one, where well, winemakers will press the grapes pretty much directly without soaking the skins and just simple pressing will infuse a tiny bit of color, that nice salmon pin color that we love, into the rosé. For a darker rosé, well, you'll have to crush the berries, you know, kind of crush them with the machinery and let the skins soak into the juice for a few hours. White grapes are pretty much always pressed directly without soaking, so the grapes are just pressed, in, pressed into a press. For the red wines though, the wine is 
actually fermented with the skins and the seeds of the grapes everything into the tank which is why they have so much color and also which is why they have so much tannins because the tannins are also into the grapes skin So once the grapes are pressed, well, we are going to be needing some friends, some help for turning the sugar into the grape juice, into alcohol through the fermentation. And that's so we get a bit more of an adult drink, yes, but more importantly, also so we get some stable wine that we are going to be able to keep and age for several years. And not only grape juice, which if you ask me, is far less interesting. So there's not a whole lot you need to know about wine yeast, well, that's unless you are a winemaker, otherwise don't worry too much about them. But essentially, most often winemakers will use selected commercial yeasts, yeast that you can buy in a bag, and they are pretty large bags, but they are pretty similar to the ones that you are going to be using at home for making bread or pizza dough or brioche and any sort of fermented bakes. Although the yeasts used for winemaking are specialized yeast that really love fermenting grape juice in particular so they are really very close to the baking yeast and i think you could make some bread with wine fermentation yeast and the other way around i think you could make some wine with baking yeast but that i um, think i'm pretty sure but i think you could do it but you could also add no yeast to a tank of grape juice in which case the natural yeast what we call natural yeast or sometimes they call wild yeast and those are yeast that are naturally present on the grapes out in the field they will take care of the fermentation it's actually used more and more often these days as it, as it tends to give a little bit more personality and authenticity to the wine's expression So you've probably noticed it, but wine benefits from a bit of an exception in the world of food labeling. When you make wine, you don't have to make uh, the list of the ingredients and detail all the additives of what's actually been used to produce that bottle of wine. So some will argue that this is a bit of an anomaly, which I guess is probably true. That said, in all fairness, wine is pretty much made entirely from grapes and the additives are going to represent only a very very tiny amount of what's in the bottle. The main additives to wine are one, the sulfites or they are also called the sulfur dioxide or SO2 which is a preservative that prevents wine from oxidizing too quickly and it also inhibits the bacteria which protects the wine from spoilage. You know, it protects the wine essentially from becoming and turning vinegar so you can age it quite well. Other additives that are important in winemaking can be what are called the fining edge agents. Fining agents. Those are essentially clarifying agents that help making a clear and clean wine that doesn't look hazy when you open the bottle and pour your glass of wine so it looks nice and clear and you can age it really well. They are generally either proteins or off products that are added to the wine during winemaking but then they precipitate in the tank and they are often also filtered out before bottling. So there'd only be traces of finding agents into your wine and not the actual finding agent itself. But if you are a vegan, you need to know that there might be traces of animal proteins like eggs or gelatin into some wine. And finally, let's have a word on oak, because oak is just a natural ideal companion to wine. So obviously, initially they used oak to make the wine barrels that were used to transport wine in a much safer way than old containers like amphorae that used to break all the time during transport on aboard ships. But they also found that wine got actually better when matured in oak through transport and so they started maturing the wine into oak barrels at the wineries themselves without even shipping the barrels. An interesting fact though is that it has to be oak. Other species of trees, and there's been lots of experiment, other species of trees just aren't as good. It has to be also certain species of oak, mainly ones found in Europe and in France in particular, but there is also one species that is really popular also for bourbon making in the United States, which is called the white oak or American oak. 
oak does three things to your wine. It allows for a slow aeration of the wine as some air slowly makes its way through the wood through the barrel in the maturation process. Then the infusion of oak into the wine adds some toasty notes and vanillas, touches of hazelnut and sweet spices. It also adds some smooth round tenants that are transferred, infused lots of oaky goodness and darkness and spiciness into your wine. And that's it for me for today everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you've got a specific question on one of the topics that I've touched on today, well feel free to let me know in the comments on YouTube, in the comment section of this video. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Also if you think there is a topic, a specific topic, maybe one of those that I've covered here or else that would really need some further explanation and further coverage that you'd really be interested to hear more about in this series, well, feel free to let us know. You know, I am a winemaker. I spent the past 20 years breathing wine, well, sipping wine every once in a while, but studying wine, making fine wine all around the world. And I've been wanting to learn as much as possible about wine. And now I feel that it's really time for me to pass on the baton of wine knowledge and, you know, share, simply share my passion with you as well. Really, what I really want you as a member of the Bonner private wine partnership is to understand how deep and fascinating wine can be well through this series for one and through the wine club the great thing about it too is that the more you know about your wine the more you simply enjoy it as well i hope you enjoyed today's video and i will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine and i will see you soon with the next video cheers au revoir santé